All right, hello and good evening. My name is Jared Hansen. I want to take a quick video to introduce you to running a stepper motor using a PLC. I have other videos showing how to do this with a microcontroller, so it's an Arduino, um, and different video for an HMI control. But for this one, we're going to use an industrial PLC controller, as you can see here, which PLC is Programmable Logic Controller. And we're going to be using a very affordable PLC, one of the lowest cost models, um, a serial controlled stepper driver, and a linear rail. So the example that I'll be giving with all the links to all the software and everything, we'll be just running this between two limits, back and forth. Okay, so you'll have everything you need to get started, uh, and I'm going to provide links to all the hardware and everything. So that said, if also you're looking to instead have someone handle this for you, or if you need uh, professional help with this, I do offer a service. Um, and you can find a link in the description on how to contact me. But I'm going to try to give you everything you need for all the do-it-yourselfers that you know want to learn this. So let's jump right in and start talking about hardware. So for the hardware, we're going to go with the Click PLC. Uh, it's Automation Direct brand, and it's well known. It's been around for a while. Comes in a lot of different configurations, so it's good for a lot of simple projects. Um, that says not like. For this example, we're not using like Wi-Fi control or anything, uh, so it's great for this. Uh, I won't go too in depth there. The only note I'll make while looking on that is the run and stop switch, which we'll reference in the future. That's where that's at for switching it between run and stop mode. It's good to familiarize yourself with that for safety reasons. Like stop mode is like while development is happening or testing, and run mode is when you actually want to run and have things move. Cool. Um. So, other notes on the PLC, super low cost, like we said, the software that comes for it is free. Uh, so it's not like a lot of Alan Bradley stuff where you have to pay thousands for software and you gotta get set up. It's free, it's easy to download, I'll have links for that. All right, there's also a lot of online support material. It's 24 volt compatible. It can be upgraded to countless attachment modules. So if you need more stuff for your product, like it's got countless attachment modules that um, expand its uh, IO. Cool. And also multiple <laughs> configurations, so you can have a, you know, just the base PLC if you need it with analog outputs. You can buy one with analog outputs versus and I'll just have less other I/O. All right. You also need this programming cable here to program the PLC. You'll need this cable and this driver, which I'll link, uh, and a stepper motor. With this color code uh, wiring doesn't have to be that color code. Just go with the manufacturer specs if not. But I'll link this exact motor that using this example, or any stepper motor online, uh, stepper motor should also have that color code. All right, these two switches are optional, because if we have time, I'll show you how to do this without uh, physical switches, but you will need limit switches if you're trying to replicate this exact system where it moves based on these limits. Uh, based on, you know, when it hits the top limit, it starts going down. When it hits the bottom limit, it starts going up. Okay? And that's how you wire them and into the ports that they go in. So that's enough with hardware, since you'll have the links. Now let's talk about the software. So go ahead and download the Click PLC software, and we'll start from there. Let me go ahead and close it on my computer so you can see exactly what this is going to look like. So we're going to find it, and we're going to open it. Then we're going to say connect to a PLC. This, you know, again, you have to connect this cable to your computer and then to port one and the PLC. Okay, so we're going to say connect to a PLC and wait for this to open up. If you know like which COM port it's on and your baud rate and you want to set up your parity bits and everything, you can totally do that. Or if you just want to have it do it for you the first time, what you can do is go click auto detect and then start. This takes a minute but it'll run through checking multiple in case they've been set to a weird baud rate or something or you're having trouble finding them. You can see it's just scanning through a lot of different combinations there. And once we get to 38400, we'll pretty much know it's about to find it because that's what my PLC's baud rate is set to. And there we go. Cool. PLC was found. Okay. Connect. So you have two options. Read 
project from the PLC, which was what I would be doing because it's already loaded into my PLC. But what you would need to do is don't reproject from the PLC because you, you're going to be using the product that I uh, attached or linked in the description, video description, so you can download this exact product. Select OK. And then we're going to have to go open that product. So we're going to go so File, Open Project, and in your Downloads folder, um, you're going to find Bouncing Linear Rail. All right. Oh, and I spelled that wrong, but oh well. <laughs> uh, so now we got all that going. Let's shrink this down for a little bit and move over here. So we've now attached our brought in this program, but it's not in the PLC yet. So we need to uh, write this product to the PLC, but again, make sure everything's safe, nothing's about to be hit, or if anything moves safe, uh, one of the best ways to do that is put it into stop mode, or you know, not have things connected at first until you've done the basic setup. But we can go to PLC tab, and then write project into PLC, not write data into PLC, write project into PLC. All right, this is gonna pop up. I'm gonna say okay, and then PLC is in run mode. It's warning me that it's in run mode. Do I want it in stop mode? I'm gonna say yes. But if yours is in stop mode, you might not get that warning, of course. So now it's asking do I want to go ahead and change it back. Run mode, I'll say okay. And you can see now that I've gotten highlighted uh, icons here, and that I can see reactions. So this is the upper limit switch, and if I uh, engage it or disengage it, you can see those changes happening. There's also the upper limit switch indicator. This is a normally closed contact. And this is a normally open contact. You can see both symbols there. You can see them behaving and indicating based on what they are. Cool. We also have the green button here. And we have the selector switch here. You can see based on those. So I can leave the selector switch in the off position. Select green. This is how you would do your basic checks, make sure you wired everything right. Um, but cool, they should be behaving like this. Select the switch in the on position. Cool. All right, so what's next? Again, we're not gonna try to go too, too in depth about PLC programming since uh, there's going to be like two types of people, one that's like already knows all this and they just want to know the stepper motor part of it and see that example, and then the ones that like they want to know everything because they've never seen any PLC program before and that really would be a more in-depth video and really long. If I'm going to try to make this video, I was hoping for under 10 minutes. So, but simplest part, these are just called rungs. I put rung comment on each so you can see like this rung one has a comment. If lower limit switch is hit upper and upper limit switch is not hit, we're going to reverse jog directions, and then we're going to use a speed setting for that. So if this lower limit switch gets hit, you can see upper limit switch is not hit. It's gotten through these two commands. Everything on the rung is highlighted. Oops. And it's going to then write this static text. So that's how we're controlling the driver. We're outputting the static text for different command types, and I'll show some of that. So this one's a CS command. We see CS negative 20. So what that is saying is change speed CS negative 20. So speed of negative 20 will be now the updated speed. You see everything turned off there because I updated this even though I didn't make a change as I clicked OK. It Now it's going to make me rewrite the project before I can do the status monitoring again. But uh, let's see. So the opposite of that would be if the upper limit switch was um, triggered, but the lower switch was not triggered, and it made it through this rung, then it's going to reverse direction by saying CS20. So still a speed of 20, but it's no longer negative 20, so it's going to be the opposite direction that it was going. Okay. And where do you find these? So another program you can download, which I'll link, is the SureStep Pro. Um, our Sure Motion Pro, and that has the basics for setting up your stepper driver if you'd like um, to do different configurations and whatnot. But you can go to Help Contents, and then you can scroll down to Commands, Open, and then you'll have a full list. So we just talked about CS, 
which is here, that command is change speed. So it's great use. Uh, and then the other command you saw here, the money sign 0D, that's just characters you have to put at the end of it so it knows that that's the end of the static text and you know, it can move on. But it might not work if you, or it wouldn't work if you don't add that at the end. So you'll see that after each command. So even here, where I have two commands in one, I have ME, and then this end text, and then CJ, and then another end command. So in this situation, we're saying motor engage, and then commence jogging. CJ, commence jogging. So if we jump back. Oops, let me find that. Yeah, ME. Oh, let's do CJ first. It's right here. CJ, commence jogging. ME, motor engaged. Oops. There we go. ME, motor enable. Sorry, motor enable. And then MD would be motor disable. Cool. All right. So that's the basics there. We have an understanding of that. Hopefully, um, I don't want to get again too far into the weeds, but let's see some of this run. So if we wanted to write this project so we can get our status monitor back. Because right now it would still run even though we're not seeing the status monitor. Um, this is telling us that this code has been changed and we should probably update it if we want to build monitor the true status. So. Okay, transfer complete. Okay. So if your monitor doesn't come back, you can go to Monitor tab, Stats Monitor. Cool. So you can see now we're here, and let's do the example of commencing jog if green switch is pressed. So you can see green switch is not pressed, but the switch selector switch is in the correct position. So if I turn the selector switch in the wrong position and press green, it doesn't get through to commence jog. Or if I just turn the selector switch, it doesn't get through because it needs green button, then both are going to get. So I'm going to click that. We got through here. It sent the command, and it was successful. And you can see it's hitting the limits and changing directions here. So you can see we sent that command, sent that command, sent this command. So pretty simple once you've uh, gotten the basic introduction, hopefully. Uh, any other stuff? So we have this rung here, that if the slicer switch is in the off position, open, it's going to continuously send this command of SJ, which is uh, stop jog, and then MD, which is motor disable. So, see, if it was moving, which, again, we'll start it, and then it changes, and now it's not moving, this will make sure that switch overrides. So that's great, and, you know, stops the movement. Then you have stop movement if both limits are hit, since that's just a safety that, hey, that should never happen. They should never both be hit, which if they're both hit, it would do the same thing. It would stop jog and motor disable. Okay, uh, going over 10 minutes, I'll try to do a quick example. Let's say you wanted to not wire switches, you wanted to run this from your computer, type of example. So what you could do, you see there's our end statement, so you have to have an end command as your last command. So I have to leave this rung here, but we can insert a rung before this. And we can do an example of a normally open contact. And let's go check what I did when I was playing around with this. I need to go, go to data view. We'll find something that we've already assigned, C2 and C3. Again, you should have the already same file, so we can use C2 and C3. All right, well, let's just use C2. So C2, all right, and let's just say we want to replicate this selector, or this rung, which is commence jog. Well, I'm going to use C2 as the green button, and I'm going to use selector switch again. So selector switch. So same condition, except now you don't have to push the green button, but the selector switch still has to be in the right position. Okay. I have to go back up to the commence jog rung, grab that static text output command, and put it here. So it's going to be the same thing, motor enable, commence jogging, and we're going to go ahead and go to PLC write project. And this will be the end of the video after that.
But again, if you have more complex products or you'd like to instead hire out someone to customize this for you, feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to quote your project. We also build control panels and uh, do machine design as well. All right, so we're back uh, with a new program. I'm gonna go turn the status monitor on. You can see selector switch is working, but how do we do C2 if there's no physical button uh, assigned to C2? Well, what we'll do is go to data view, and then we'll see C2 here. We can select it to be on, and then we're gonna write all new values. Yes. Now you can see it's engaged here, and now it's running. If I turn this off, it's not going to stop it, because again, the selector switch stops it. The C2 is just acting as the green button, but if I turn the selector switch to off, uh, it works the same. So I'm not gonna include in the file, I'm gonna include before this change, so feel free to make this change different. Uh, that's just a practice or proof of concept. You can also play around with things like changing the speed. Let's say I wanted it to be half the speed. So CS negative 20, I could say CS 10 now. So it's gonna be half the speed in one of the directions. DLC, right project. And that would change the speed, so one one direction would be half the speed of the other direction, which is another easy one. What did I do here? Oh, sorry, I didn't put it back in run mode. I got ahead of myself and looked away. All right, so it's select switch on. Y'all can hear the difference there. Half the speed when it's going up, double the speed when it's going down, so. Cool, hope someone found that helpful. Uh, if you need any more help, feel free to reach out, or if you'd like to see more videos on this, uh, just let me know. Thanks. Bye.